Welcome to Border Crossings. I'm Larry London, and on today's show, we are joined by twin brothers Matthew and Gunnar Nelson, who scored some of the biggest rock hits back in the 1990s as Nelson. The brothers grew up in one of America's favorite music families. As their grandparents, Ozzie and Harriet, had a popular TV show in the 1950s, and their father, Ricky Nelson, rivaled Elvis as the most popular male teen idol in the 50s and 60s. Nelson topped the charts in 1990 with the mega hit, I Can't Live Without Your Love and Affection, and are in the Guinness record book since their family is the only one to reach the top of the charts in three successive generations. Nelson, join us today to discuss their remastered multi-platinum vinyl album, After the Rain, and to perform some of their biggest hits. Stay tuned, this is Border Crossings. Hi, this is Larry London. Welcome to Border Crossings in our studios and on tour right now for a lot of great music, a lot of great hits, and a, a remastered version of a classic album from their collection of great hits. We've got Gunner and Matthew Nelson. Nelson are in the studios today. Welcome to Thank DC. You Thank so you so much. Good to see you. Now yeah, it's, nice uh, to meet you. Nice to know you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <no> pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, you guys... Uh, you know, are, are tr tremendously talented. You come from a great music heritage. Uh, you know, I, I'm going to mention this for the worldwide audience who are tuning in in 100 countries around the world. The, the two brothers here are the sons of uh, Ricky Nelson, who's a, a, a legendary music reformer, rock and roll hall of famer. And so, uh, I mean, it's got a, I, he played a significant part in you deciding what it was you wanted to do. Well, before. it's great for us because we always had great social proof, you know, around the house when we were babies, our first memories were of watching our father perform mm -hmm. with a Stone Canyon band. And it was, it was kind of neat. It's like, uh, any family that comes from, uh, that history of whatever it is that family does for us, it was always around us. It was being done at the highest of levels and it was just kind of what you did. It was kind of our normal. I mean, if you think about it too, our grandparents, Ozzy and Harriet, uh, were musicians before they were actors. Right. And uh, Ozzy had his own number one records in the 30s with Harriet singing lead for him. So we're, I guess, the only family so far in history with three successive generations of number one hit makers. Right. And that's in the Guinness Book of World Records. It yeah. is. And it's just kind of, if you think about it, it's just our normal. That's just something that, mm -hmm. that happened. And of course, our mother's side of the family, too, was in show business. And so you guys, uh, obviously, Dad was supportive of going into music that's well he was i think in the beginning it was it was kind of a goof for him because we started really really young yeah, i mean 12 we're, i think well no we actually before that we got our first instruments when we were six years old mm -hmm. i got my first drum set matt got his first uh bass and the parents at the time we were living in kind of like a little gentleman farm there in studio city california it was an old property mm -hmm. uh, but our parents put us out in the hayloft over the barn so it was away from the house and we could make a racket and, and all that. And then our dad was coming and going from the road as much as he was, like 300 shows a year. Mm -hmm. And he came back one day when, when we were about 10 or 11, he realized we hadn't stopped. You know, it was like our passion. It was the one thing that we, we loved doing. We would rush home after school and just pick up the instruments and jam together. Mm -hmm. Played a records, that type of thing. I remember, I just think like any other parent that buys their kid an instrument, they figure, ah, oh, this is going to be for a second and then they'll go on to the next thing. And we still have not grown up clearly so we haven't <laughs> gone on to the next thing and he produced some of your music too yeah actually you mentioned our 12th uh, birthday that mm -hmm. was that was really when it happened we actually got surprised by our father for our first recording session he produced it uh, he told us we were going to a dentist appointment and no kid wants to do that on our 12th birthday mm -hmm. <laughs> and so we went to a strange building thinking that we were going to get our, our teeth drilled or something mm -hmm. and uh, we walked in our dad was there our instruments were set up and and it was a big surprise and he produced our first session matt wrote a song uh, and uh, in the the Pointer Sisters wound up singing back up. Wow! I played drums. Matt played. Well, bass. we didn't know it was them. It was just these cool ladies showed up and sang back up and yeah. had and some cake they? and yeah. Right. <laughs> and our uh, our dad's guitar player John Beelan played guitar and uh -huh. and that was really cool. You know, it was it was sobering too. It was the first time we actually heard ourselves recorded, and boy, we we sounded like the Chipmunks and, and stuff. <laughs> but it it, was, it really did uh, if the fuse. If the fuse had been set, it definitely was lit that day. Mm -hmm. I remember when that our happened. mother actually realizing that they had completely created monsters that day. You know, we got home and uh, almost wore the tape out. You know, it was like the first cassette tapes were out at that mm -hmm. point. And uh, we really did. We wore a, a, a wear spot on that tape that first night. And our mom looked at our dad and said... I really think we screwed up with this. Yeah, we just lost the boys. Well, I'm going to have you do some music now. I mean, we've talked a lot, so we're going to talk some more. But let's hear something, if you guys wouldn't mind playing it. First song Why not? number one, okay, we could so do that. Here she comes. Mm, just 
just like an angel Seems like forever that she's been on my mind But nothing has changed She thinks I'm a waste of her time There she goes No, she don't know what she's missing Can't she see I'll never give her the fight I'll do all I can Till she understands my desire I've been on the outside looking in Let me into your heart, oh There's nothing on earth that should keep us apart Baby, I can't live without your love and affection I can't face another night on my own I'd give up my pride to save me from being alone That was Sounding our, great. That was our 50s edit. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, I love you. it. It's Nelson uh, as our guest here in uh, the Voice of America studios today. And uh, you guys, four number one MTV videos. That's fantastic. Five top 20 hits. Of course, that among the biggest hits uh, in your collection. That's fantastic. And Thank the new you. album, the new re-released album, or remastered album. That's right. There's a lot of things about that that, uh, that are very special to us. Uh, this has been, what, over 25 years now. I mean... I'm dating myself, but yeah, it's 20, 27 years. Twenty seven years. Ooh, but who's counting? Who's now, counting? Now technology was different twenty seven yes. years ago. The industry was. was too. It really, really was. Now the, there was the, an industry. There the, was. Yes. <laughs> but technologically speaking, the the difference is is back then, uh, it was it was when CDs were brand new, believe it or not, and they hadn't really gotten it right. The transferring from recording on on big analog tape like we all did back in the day. There weren't computers and all that stuff. You had to do it the hard way in a big studio, right? But to get it from that, which sounded wonderful when we got done with that, to dither it down onto a CD, it got really, really small. And we just, no one had the technology to actually bridge that gap and make it sound same for same. And here we are all, all these years later and they've got, an, they've got it nailed. Our problem was our label, Geffen Records, got sold five, six times since we recorded back then. They owned the masters. They misplaced the master for the After the Rain record, which is ir ironic. You know, you sell five million records of an album. You would think they'd take better care of it. It just, it, for, move after move, it got misplaced. Bottom line is, after all these years, Matthew worked for about two years talking to uh, what is now MCA, who actually technically has the rights to it, and they physically sent somebody down after years of saying, we've lost the master, we don't know where it is, and it, they actually found it in a mislabeled box. And what that enabled us to do for the first time in 27 years was use modern technology to go back into the studio and what's called remaster the album. And make a lot it of people sound overuse like, that. They overuse that term, I think. And you see do. it on a lot of stuff. Remastered, digitally remastered. Well, that just means we, they transferred it. In our case, we really did fix it. We fixed some problems that were inherent in it. Not changed the music, but made it what it was, as Gunnar was saying, over the big speakers in the studio when we recorded it. Um, it actually sounds like uh, it's present. It sounds like you're in the room. The, the soundstage just got a whole lot wider and deeper. And uh, as a bass player, uh, we were losing a lot of low-end information on the, on the first album that sold all the records. I can't really complain. It sold a lot of records. But mm -hmm. for us to hear this back now, and we serviced uh, radio and the streaming services with the new masters as well, but the first time you can actually buy this is on this vinyl that we released uh, on, I guess, 180-gram vinyl, which is an audiophile thing from a company called Friday Music. And we're really honored, though, because they consider the album one of the classics now. Uh, they don't reissue a lot of these albums. So for us, we're in really, really uh We're in fine company. company. And, yeah. and uh, it, it, as Matt mentioned, it's, it's an honor. But for us, it's kind of one of those things that that we kind of left hanging there that, that was frustrating. You would hear, we would hear our song 
come back over Hair Nation or something on, on Sirius XM, and it would sound half as loud mm. and half as wide as everything else that was there, and it was really unfair. And now that's all been fixed, and it's pretty cool. It was a very emotional experience to hear it back for the first time because it really was sounding for the first time in all of those years the exact way we heard it on the big mains at Cherokee Studios there in Hollywood. So this is the exact same album. You didn't add any songs? We didn't add any songs. Something. The only thing that we did was we did a slightly different packaging where we did mm -hmm. a song-by-song -song description for the people who've made this, uh, this album and the songs on this album a part of their lives. Now they get to hear from us kind of the stories and the motivations behind each song, where they came from, how they were written, what they meant to us, what they did that uh, you wouldn't really get in a magazine or in any other interview. We didn't really open up about it. So we, we actually did that. We did that, and I think it's important to note, too, that this is an album. We actually created this to be one cohesive experience where you start, you drop the needle. When, when we originally recorded it, it was there was a side A and a side B. You had cassettes, so you had to flip them over, that type of thing. So it was theater of the mind. We actually really put something together and took a lot of time to make it right. So a lot of people that grew up with the album, that's how they experienced it for the first time. You know, the, the song starts with the, the big, uh, the album starts with the, the, the big hit mm -hmm. and just rolls right through. And by the time the album ends, you've been on a journey yeah. uh, with us. Gunnar and I, we were in LA, I wanna say this too. Um, I think what's really important, especially where we are right now with what's going on in the world, the world's a scary place, it's tumultuous. But we were in LA, uh, Gunnar and I, uh, having some meetings and we ran into an old friend, David Crosby, you know, rock and roll legend. And right before, we just said a quick hi, how you doing, how's the wife, how's Jan doing? And it was nice to catch up, but as he walked out, he turned to both of us and he stopped and it got really strange, like the world stopped and he turned and it was like Yoda. And he said, keep playing music. And I said, okay, Dave, I'll... and he said, no, 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 stop, I'm serious. Keep playing music, the world needs us more than ever right now. And then he walked away. Wow. And I, I won't forget that, you know, regardless, because you can't stop. This is something that we do, not just for ourselves, but hopefully it, in in three minutes, maybe we can make somebody's life a little bit better. You know, we yeah. also get to write our own script, unlike a lot of the actors that are out there. Um, this The songs have always been things that we've written. They're parts of us. And, you know, I, I hope that people throughout the years have gotten to know a little bit about us through those songs. And they become little time machines, little little milestones and memories for people. Uh, I don't know about you, but if I listen to a particular song, I'm instantly back at a particular time. Sure. Mm. Uh, or with a particular person. We all connect. Yeah, right. and, and it's and it's pretty great. And you know, the the thing is that the making music for the Nelson family, even though we come from actors and sports people too, but but for us, making music is not it's not what we do. It's really who we are. Um, I can't imagine not playing music. I mean, I really can't. And there are far easier ways to make a living. Trust me. There really are. But I, I can't think of a better way mm -hmm. to, to do that. And we're in the, as Grandma Harriet says, boys, if you're going to do this for a living, realize you're not in the entertainment business. Nelsons have never been in the entertainment business. We've been in the connection business. Always keep well that stated. in mind. And that's what they really did great. And we were really blessed to see that in our father. He, mm -hmm. he never had a yo babe sort of moment. He took time. You worked with him. Yes. Shakes you, shakes, shakes your hand, looks you in the eye, and and listens to you, and um, it's important for people, and um, and so we feel like, you know, kind of we've got this opportunity uh, throughout all of these years to to connect with people and make a difference. It's not being trite. It's really honestly what's always motivated us, and you know, a, a, a career is a series of comebacks, just like life is. Mm -hmm. But that was we, our dad. He said that a lot. But uh, we have this really great opportunity if we play our cards right. Every now and again, you catch a lick, and hopefully it's going to be with the song that you wrote that really makes a difference in people's lives. Well, I'm very excited that you guys were, you know, are willing to come here and talk and open up like this, and, and I was very excited when I heard that you were willing to do it uh, because it brought back memories to me, and, and just listening to you speak now brings back fond memories because I spoke to you, I don't know, 35 or so years ago sure. wow. in another market, yeah. you know, when we we're all a lot younger than we are today. But what, what are you uh, trying to say? Yeah. <laughs> well, I was younger. <laughs> I was 10. That's right. But, that's right. I was six. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> we got Matthew and Gunner. They are Nelson. We're going to ask if you do another song for us. This is one that started it. And uh, we actually wrote this song as, uh, well, people think it was a typical relationship song. It wasn't. This one actually was written about a friend of ours we grew up with. And uh, he kind of went in a different direction. We didn't know if that friendship was going to rekindle or not. 
And uh, my favorite line in this song is, don't be afraid to lose what was never meant to be. It's a song called After the Rain. After the Rain, title track to the new album. That's right, title title track to the, the new old album. The new the old new album. Old the new old, re- remastered. remastered, completely better. <laughs> Bigger record. and better and fewer calories. Well, Matthew's better at least. <laughs> I am. I, he is. So always. how's the tour going? You guys having fun? It's, it's a never-ending thing. Mm-hmm. You know, it's kind of one of those things. It's changed. It's a, little, it's a little different than it was back in the day. Currently, right now, we're not out on a bus tour. When we went out on the After the Rain tour, we were out for 13 straight months. Uh, it was amazing. And something, something that I you highly recommend. Do when you're 22. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> you do it when you're 22. Wow. And it was a blast. Mm-hmm. It really, honestly, was playing to 22,000 screaming chicks every night was awesome. I highly recommend it. <laughs> it was great. And um, and now it's you know it's it's kind of cool. We play big shows. We play everything in between. Um, as long as we're playing, we're happy. Mm-hmm. And you get to play to different generations of fans as well. Well, we do. We, we have do. a couple of different uh, shows. Yeah. Uh, now that you mentioned that, we've, we've got... got to, actually, Nelson is having a resurgence, which is interesting. It's weird when you start doing interviews and they say, so what's it feel like now that you're a classic rocker? <laughs> you know? I don't feel tardy. <laughs> I don't feel tardy. <laughs> we, um, we've actually kind of uh, started to entertain offers to to bring the, the, the whole project back in a bigger way, you know, in big, um, in big arenas and, and events like like that as an opening uh, act for some really large bands and I think we're going to be doing that next year and I prefer to think of it that the really large bands are closing for us yes I figured that that's well that's that's Gunner sure and then we uh, we have another show that we've been doing for a few years now uh, called Ricky Nelson Remembered and we get to visit our dad every night through his songs and tell stories and that type of thing and that's actually something we thought was going to last about a year and it's been a lot of years now that we've been doing it it's kind of nice because it keeps us centered and it's very um, almost like an Americana type of a trip. We spent about ten years building it to a, a pretty fine show. It's a high integrity show that's best described as like an A and E biography episode meets a rock concert. It's pretty cool. We it's have neat. the unfair of adva- advantage of having those four hundred thirty five episodes of Ozzy and Harriet. Sure, sure. That we can pull from. But you know, one thing we haven't done, which we'd love to do, our dad's reach internationally was huge. And the one thing that we want to focus on with that brand is actually taking that worldwide. That's what we'd, yeah, we'd, we'd love like to, to go to, to Europe. We'd love to go to South America with it, the Pacific Rim. His, his music really did get everywhere. And we'll see what happens with that. We've got mm-hmm. some big plans for it. And, uh, you know, we also have another. We actually put together a Christmas tour as well for That's the great. last couple of months of the year. Now this will be our fourth year. We, we head on out and we pretty much put everything away, put a completely different show together, not mm-hmm. just like what a lot of artists do, throwing some Christmas songs in their show. Sure. We did a completely 
Christmas show mm -hmm. and uh, and hit the hit the ground running with that and it's been really fun. Well, I know the world is excited to hear the prospect of you guys touring internationally because uh, we're on in a hundred countries right now. That's, so that's right. Well, fantastic. Nelson actually too uh, did not get uh, overseas enough. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that we we played uh, maybe two shows in in Brazil, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, but it's interesting because we played one show in the United Kingdom in Nottingham, England, and we were the headline act at something called Firefest a couple of years ago. And it was the biggest club I've ever seen. I think it, it held 3,000 people. It was completely packed. Everybody there to see us, and it was people f largely from other countries that kind of migrated to England to see us, to see Nelson play. Mm -hmm. And so we knew that there was a little bit of an, uh, of an interest there, and all we want to do is make sure that once we get overseas that we bring a show that makes people really glad they waited this long to come see us. Mm. You know, fortunately for us, we, uh, I think we still have our voices, which is nice. You know, we have a lot of friends that are fighting Sound that great. now. Well, he, Matthew, he, sounds, anyway. he sounds pretty good. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> we're, you know, we're not ready to, to hang it up. You know, we definitely play like we mean at every show. Uh, we play every show like it's our last. And all we want is the opportunity, actually, to bring our music overseas, whether it be Ricky Nelson, remember, or Nelson, or both mm -hmm. would be awesome. Because well, I thought, how cool, what, how cool would it be to like do a matinee of Ricky Nelson, remembered, flip the room, and come back out with Nelson? With a rock show. That would be cool. We'd love to do it. We love being musically schizophrenic. We have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a cruise in the making to me. Oh, I mean, yeah, yeah, that's, that's right. right. Those That's Nelsons, right. they're, they're a great bunch of guys. The wacky Nelson crew. <laughs> That's right. Matthew and Gunnar are our guests here on The Voice of America today uh, on the road for After the Rain Remastered and uh, putting out the hits all these years. Now, you talk about the Ricky Nelson Remembered Show. What is your, each one of you, I'm sure, has his own remembrance of your dad, has your fondest memory Oh, gosh, I got so many dad. of them. Yeah, so if you could single out Let me see. something, oh, you know, a couple, whatever, something that comes to mind, you say, when I think of my dad, this is always something I cherish he about. He was really funny. The smell of polo and menthol cigarettes. That's right. Polo cologne and menthol cigarettes. Okay, yeah. well, okay, something came up uh, recently. Like I, I mentioned, we just turned 50, so we just had our 50th birthday. There's a tradition that our father began that is ongoing now, that on your birthday, at some point, and he was clearly a Three Stooges fan, you were going to get a whipped cream pie in the face. At some point during the 24 hours that mark your birthday, it's we gonna happen. We grew completely paranoid on our birthday. And now our dad was the master pie placer of all time. He truly was. And it wasn't pie throw. There's a big difference. <laughs> yeah, if you actually, we, we learned and he taught us, if you throw a pie, people's instincts take over and they duck and you'll miss. There's, a, there's an optimum speed an optimal speed for placement of the pie, <laughs> where a person looks at it and goes, goes, "Oh, is that a pie?" And then, then it's yeah, white then out. You okay, get it. Right. okay. So, <laughs> it, our dad was just the best at this. Um, I, by the way, got completely pied by my love, my eleven year old. She was wonderful at it. I was very proud. Um, my fiftieth, <laughs> but uh, we were turning thirteen, and our father was playing at uh, Astro World in Houston, and we'd gone through the entire day, peeking around corners, nervous. Matt was a lookout. I was a lookout. We were waiting for that pie to happen. And, you know, our dad was playing Astroworld. Was a, it was like a Six Flags. It's a, yeah. it's a big amusement park. They had one so, heck of a roller coaster. Oh, it was killer. Yeah. The, the American Eagle. Yep. Yeah. I thought it was the Texas Cyclone. Nope. That was a different place. <laughs> okay. And, uh, <laughs> uh, well, we, like I said, we never missed an amusement park gig our dad had. And, and that was a great way to spend our 13th birthday. We didn't have school. He flew us down to Texas. We got to ride the rides in the park all day, see his show twice, the most shows he played. And we'd gone through the entire day, no pie. And we were wondering what was up. We kind of felt a little let down because, you know, you have to watch out for the band too because it's not just our dad. You're fair game, right? Sure. And they're great too. Nothing, nothing. And it's like 11.50 at night. The day is almost past. We're sitting there having a conversation with our pop in his hotel room. He's actually got his back to us and he's shaving, talking to us through the mirror. We have a 20, 30 minute conversation talking about life, how the day we had, how proud he was of us that we're growing into men now and that the whole shtick, right? And then all of a sudden he goes, ow, 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 and he bends over in the sink like he cut his face. The entire time, he had a pie hidden in the sink. <laughs> so we go, oh, Pop, are you okay? And man, he Bang. nailed us, he <laughs> nailed us. And uh, yeah, I mean, he, that's that's one of the things that, that, that I remember from He always father. said to us, you know, don't lose your sense of humor, you're gonna need it. And it's really true. I don't care who you are and what you do. It sure helps in the music industry. But, you know, in the world, you know, don't don't lose your sense of humor. Mm. It helps. It helps you get through stuff. And for me, it was just a conversation we had. 
uh, after he, he actually saw a show that we played about two weeks before we lost him. And it was in the kitchen. And uh, always the great talks happen in the kitchen. The sun was coming up. And uh, we had had one of those life-defining talks. And as the sun came up, he said, you know, I want you guys to know I love you. And I said, well, I love you too, Pop. He said, no, I, it's more than that. I want you to know that I admire you guys as my peers. I consider you my peers. I'm really proud of you guys. And, you know, tears and hugs and all that kind of stuff. And we lost him two weeks later. Mm-hmm. And it's just so nice that we actually got a chance to have that, that most people never get that. Right. You know? It's Field of Dreams time, you know. Yeah. Uh, so for us, we're very lucky that we had that. And you I wish that you were. Hold on to forever. I'd rather have him here, <laughs> of but course. Uh, you know that's not a bad thing to have. Yeah. And growing up around all of that was going on with your father. Mm-hmm. I mean, at 12, 13 years of age, all the groupies. I mean, well, you're it, you're just young, prepubescent well, we, kids. We didn't really and, realize that that he was as special as he truly was until he like came to parent teacher day at school, and the teachers were freaking out. The <laughs> girls, the women were freaking out, and it's like, oh. I guess he's doing something remarkable, right? Which was which was great, and you know it's kind of cool for us too. You know, it, it's it's been wonderful being from the family that we're from, but we were lucky enough to sell the records we sold, and we've sold so far to kids who had no idea who Ricky was. Mm-hmm. They didn't grow up with his music. It was the their parents and and the critics that were impressed, but the kids just liked what they liked. No, you're absolutely right. I'm. I- here, here. I agree with you yeah. guys. And, <laughs> and uh, again, I mean, what a thrill it is to have you here. The time is flying by. And I know, and <laughs> we I know talk a lot, you, man. I no, told that's you. okay, because I know you got a lot of things going on, and, and you're in town for you know a show that you're attending tonight, and then you're off uh, on the road for your own tour. And so you're, Yes. Could you do another song for us? Sure, sure. sure. You know what? I want to do one of Pop's tunes, if that's okay. Oh, that'd okay, be fantastic. Right? you want to do? How about, um, here's a tune that he wrote in 1971, okay. at the end of 71. He was booed off the stage at Madison Square Garden for showing up and looking different than people expected him as an oldie show. And he wrote, uh, he got booed off the stage and he wrote a song about the experience and it became one of his biggest hits, Garden if not Party. his biggest hit ever. Can't please everyone. Oh, can't you gotta please, please, gotta please yourself. Garden Party. Right, one, two, three. <laughs> to a garden party to reminisce with my old friends a chance to share old memories and play our songs again when I got to the garden party they all knew my name no one recognized me I didn't look the same but it's alright now I learned my lesson well You see you can't please everyone So you got to please yourself People came from miles around Everyone was there Yoko brought a walrus There was magic in the air And over in the corner Much to my surprise Mr. Hughes hid in Dylan's shoes, wearing his disguise. But it's all right now. I learned my lesson well. You see, you can't please everyone, so you got to please yourself. A lot da da, la da da da, a lot da da da. It's all right now, yeah. I learned my lesson well. See, you can't please everyone, so you got to please yourself. Wow, they're standing all around the world. Gosh, <laughs> what? A hair on my back is standing up there. My gosh. Congratulations on all the success, and thank you thank guys you so, so much. much. Thanks for having us. Please come back. Uh, We'd love to. You. We'd and, love uh, to have you and, back. And, and, and our love to everybody out there listening to this, it's a, it's a wonderful thing to actually have the, the ability to talk and, and talk to and reach so many people out there. And thank you for standing by us for all these years. We really do appreciate it. Well, we appreciate all the great music you have given and continue to give. Thank you. So after Thank the you. rain, remastered, pick up a copy. It is Nelson, Matthew, and Gunner joining us today. This is Border Crossings on the Voice of America. Mm-hmm.